Hey, Algebra 2. So we've already dealt with ellipses and hyperbolas. So we're not, now we're going to talk about translations of ellipses and hyperbolas. Well, what that means is what happens if the center of these two shapes are not at the origin? Well, we have formulas for those as well, just like we do with everything. So the ellipse. I always do the big eye. The ellipse. Okay. Now, what in standard form, when it's at the origin, when the center's at the origin, let's say when a is on the x-axis, we did x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. Well, what if the center is not at the origin? Then how we treated um, the circle with h and k, that applies now. So now this becomes h, x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Same thing with the hyperbola. Same deal. Um, so we have x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. All right. So let me get rid of this one since we're going to be actually having the center at a different place now. I'm just going to move this up. And now remember that there's two. There's Because it all depends on if A is underneath the X or the Y. So we could switch this up and say Y minus K squared over A squared plus X minus H squared over B squared equals 1. And notice that the H always stays with the X. Okay, H is always connected with the X. K always stays with the Y. Same thing here. We have y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals 1. All right. So let's look at our first example. It says It tells us an ellipse. It says y minus 2 squared um, over 9 plus x plus 1 squared over 4 is equal to 1. Now, even if it didn't, even if I didn't tell you that this was an ellipse, okay, even if I didn't tell you, you should tell, you should be able to know just by that middle symbol. If that's a plus, we know it's an ellipse. If it's a minus, we know it's a hyperbola. So, whoa, what just happened? Um, so that will um, help us figure this out. Uh, that will help us uh, with being able to know what this graph is going to look like. And again, plus, you know it's going to look like an oval, like an ellipse. Minus will be a hyperbola. All right, so if we had to graph this, we need to know three things. We need to know A. For an ellipse, it's always the bigger number. So this is A squared. So the square root of 9 is 3. B, the square root of 4, which is 2. And we also need to know the center. Okay, The, the center of this graph. And remember, remember, just like the circle, we, we change the symbol from the parentheses. So our x value, or h, change the symbol, that's negative 1. Change the symbol for k, so that's 2. So the way that we would graph this, okay, it says, a, uh, first, always plot your center. Always, always, always. So back 1, up 2. Negative 1, 2. From your center, notice A is underneath the Y. So you're going to go up and down 3 from the center. So 1, 2, 3. You're going to go up 3. Here you're going to go down 1, 2, 3. Because again, here's the center right here. We went up 3 and down 3 because A is underneath the Y. 2, underneath the X, that means we're going to go left and right 2. Go right 2. And then we're going to go back to, and here goes our ellipse. Then we could just join these together. There you go. Now if you were to plot this, or sorry, label this, this would be negative 1, 2. This would be over 1, up 2. This one would be back 3, so negative 3, up 2. This one would be back 1, down 1, so negative 1, negative 1. And lastly, this would be negative 1, up one, two, three, four, five. Negative one, five. All right. 
So that's how we handle it if the center is not at the origin. Okay? So let's do another one. But this one actually, we're going to have to do a little bit more work um, to solve this. So we have 9x squared plus 54x minus 4y squared plus 8y plus 41 equals 0. Okay, this problem is going to be pretty tough. I'm not going to lie. It's going to take quite a few steps. So the first thing we want to do is we have no parentheses, so we need to create parentheses. This is where we did with a circle where we completed the square. Well, um, on this one, we have to do the same thing. We have to complete the square. But we have a little different uh, problem here because we have the 9 and the 4 in front of the x squared and y squared. So what you want to do with each value is with just the x's, I'm going to factor out a 9. With just the x's. So you're going to factor out the 9, which leaves me with x squared plus 6x. By the way, I'm just going to go ahead and move that 41 over like we do with the circle. Um, move whatever's not connected, x and y, over. Here, I'm going to factor out a negative 4. Okay, I'm going to factor out a negative 4 from just the y, so that leaves me with y squared minus 2y equals negative 41. Um, I should have wrote this a little bit lower here. Let me move this down a little bit. Okay. So again, factor out the 9, factor out the negative 4. But inside these parentheses, I need to complete the square. Because again, I need to rewrite it to where I have parentheses squared. That's why we complete the square. Okay? So first step again, cut the 6 in half. We get 3. And then we square it, which gives us 9. That's the number I need to add into here. But here's a huge difference. I can't just add 9 to this side because I have a 9 on the outside here. So the question is, how much am I really adding to this side of the equal sign? If I were to distribute this 9, I'd get 9x squared plus 54x, which I had in the first place. But if I were to dis distribute that 9, I'd get an 81, not just 9. I actually added 81 to this side. So I'm going to add 81 over here as well. Okay, I didn't just add 9 into this side of the equal sign. I added in an 81. All right, let's do that with the y's now. So I'm going to take my negative 2, cut it in half. It gives me negative 1. I'm going to square it, which I get 1. So I'm going to add 1 here. But again, I didn't just add 1. If I were to distribute that negative 4, I get negative 4y squared plus 8y, which I already had. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. So I added a negative 4 really to this side of the equal sign. So I need to put a negative 4 here as well. <clears throat> I know this can seem a little confusing, but the more we do this, the more um, the better practice you'll get, and um, the more it makes sense. So now we could break this down into one parenthesis squared. So 9, then we have our parenthesis squared, x plus 3. We've done that a lot, completing the square. Here, the y, y minus 1 squared equals... 81 minus 41 is 40 minus 4, which is 36. But again, this is not done yet. We want to write this in standard form here, in which this has to be a 1. So we're going to divide by 36. Okay, divide by 36. So if I were to reduce this, this leaves me with x plus 3 squared, 9 over 36. We could divide both those by 9, which leaves me with a 4 here minus y minus 1 squared over 4 goes into 36 9 times equals 1. Okay? Well, I can look now. I know just by looking at that, we're dealing with a hyperbola. Okay? Hyperbola. Hyperbola. So now let's actually sketch this thing, okay? So we know a, for a hyperbola, a is always the first number. So here's a squared. 4 is a squared. So the square root of that is 2. Um, and we need to know our asymptotes. y equals, and we said if a is underneath, a squared is underneath the x, then our asymptotes will be positive negative b over a. The square root of 9 would be 3, so b is 3 over a, which is 2x. 
And lastly, our center now, h, negative 3, k, positive 1. So let's graph this. Okay. So here, our center's at negative 3, 1. So I went back 3, up 1. Okay, negative 3, 1. That's going to be the center of our, our, of our hyperbola. From there, notice this is A is 2, and it's underneath the x-axis. So I'm going to go right 2, and I'm going to go left 2. Okay? Right 2, left 2. But I also need to do my asymptotes. And remember, this is rise over run. And we do that not from the origin, but from the center of the hyperbola. So rise 3, run 2. So we're going to rise 3. So up 3, over 2. I'm going to put a dot there. And that's where we do our dotted line to represent the asymptote. And then rise 3 back 2. Okay, So there goes our dotted line that goes through the center. And lastly, we just draw our, asymptote, our, our hyperbola. And remember, always goes through A. 100% of the time, the hyperbola will go through A, which we plotted here, these two values. Again, find the center, plot the center. Since a squared is underneath the x, the a is going to go left and right, 2. Our asymptote is positive negative 3 over 2, so from the center we went up 3 over 2, put a little dot there and did our dotted line, our asymptote, up 3 back 2, did the same thing. And then we crossed through a when we drew our, our hyperbola. So there you go, and again, always label. So that coordinate is negative 1, 1. This coordinate is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, and then up 1. And our center, we said, was negative 3, 1. So that is how we graph um, a hyperbola in which the center is not at the origin. So good luck with that. I know this one was a, a lot of problems because we had to complete the square. Don't forget, again, we didn't just add 9. We added 81 to both sides. Here we added negative 4 to both sides. All right. Well, good luck with that. And again, ask questions at school if you need help. All right. Bye.